Hey, it is Thursday, January 13th, 2022. This is the annual board meeting of the Augensburg Bridge and Port Authority. It is 4.02 p.m. The meeting is called to order. Mr. Lawrence, do you have any letters or communications to the board? Yes, in your board read file, we have a thank you letter from the Remington for a donation that we made of $100. And uh, there is one article uh, kind of summarizing um, the, the added needs for the uh, the port dredging project and port expansion project. Anybody got any questions on that? No. Anybody um, online? Dave or Tony? No. No, any I'm questions, good. Dave? Okay. I'm good. Thank you. In light of that, uh, Mr. Lawrence, it's my understanding that uh, there's need for an executive session at this time. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. There's a need to go into executive session for matters relating to Section 105.1 E and F of the Open Meetings Law. Um, one of them is E is collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law, and F uh, is the proposed acquisition, sale, and lease of real property. Um, I don't believe there'll be any action, any formal act or vote needed or action on as um, a result of this. Okay. Is there a motion to go in executive session? I'll send it. Been made. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed. We move into executive session. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, any action to be taken as a result of executive session? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to approval of board minutes. I believe Mr. King is no longer online with us. Is that right? Yes. He did review and approve the minutes. He did review and approve. Okay. Who's our assistant? <laughs> so I would make a recommendation to approve the board minutes under uh, Mr. King's block of I recommendation. <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll second that. Generous. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the board minutes as submitted for December 16th, 2021. All those in favor say aye. 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 Holes. Thank you, Tony. They are approved. This would be you. Report from the nominating committee. The nominating committee proposes uh, a slate that would reappoint everyone to the current positions that they hold as chairperson Sam Burns, vice chairperson Megan Witten, secretary David King, treasurer Chris Coffin, assistant secretary Nicole Terminelli, assistant treasurer Jennifer Quirk Pittman. And I submit that slate. And member is Tony Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that needs to be put in there, but just to make sure. Okay. Um, nominating committee has offered a slate of officers. Is there a, and is that as a motion? I'll enter that as a motion, yes. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Ms. Kennedy? Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Yes. Ms. Tornelli? Yes. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Kirkpickman? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do uh, I get a cola increase this year? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. We're all Everybody gets one. Everybody gets a cola increase. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Uh, designation of staff, interim executive director. It's not interim anymore. Thank you. Yeah, it's not interim. He's he's a real he's a real deal. <laughs> um, is there a motion to appoint an executive director? Uh, I would uh, move that we uh, name uh, Steve Lawrence for another term as executive director. 
Okay, would you also like Second. to take care of the Chief, Chief Financial Officer? Yes, indeed. Patty Nisco. Tony, you second that? I will, yes, I will second that. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Executive Director Steve Lawrence, Chief Fiscal Officer Patty Nisco. Any discussion? None. Emery, call the roll, please. Mr. Minnelli? Yes. Mr. Coulson? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Ms. Kirkpatrick? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Steve and Patty, thanks for everything you have already done. And as we move into this year, expect a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can we get a cold? <laughs> <laughs> no, but nice try. <laughs> Other appointments, uh, council? Uh, Will Otis Law Firm in the Gowling LaFleur Henderson LLP. And newspapers for legal notices, Watertown Daily Times. Banks, Community, uh, NA, m and Wilmington Trust, Bank of America, Key Bank, Tompkins Trust, and other full service commercial institutions as needed. Is there a motion for those appointments? I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Coulson. Yes. Mr. Burns. Yes. Ms. Cook yes. Ms. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. Minnelli. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. George, President. Can you something? Yes. Um, the oh, there you go. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of uh, myself and the rest of our firm for the opportunity to continue to serve. Thank you. As long as you know it's because of the work that you've done, not, not your boss. <laughs> Thank you. So you know. Well, make, make I mean, sure it does that. work. Yeah, Absolutely. We, start the sure. we will slow things down for you. Okay. Don't get bit out there. Hi. Thank you. Welcome. Hi there. Hello. Yeah, we can. Yeah, come right up here to the table. Sit down, relax. Yeah. Right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. That's okay. Completely understand. Okay. Yeah. I always dress in layers because I never know. So. Emory, it's <laughs> hey, it's better than cold. <laughs> okay. Um, you can probably see from our name tags. But anyway, um, I'm Steve Florence. I'm the executive director. Nice to meet you. Um, we'll go right around the table. I'm Patty Nisco. I'm the CFO. Nicole Fermanelli. Chris Coffin sits here. He'll be right back. Okay. I'm Sam Burns, chair of the board. Hi, I'm John Clifton, board member. Hi. Okay. Please direct them to your board manager. Okay. And uh, online we have. Uh, Marie, what's that? Marie, yep, St. Clair, St. Clair. She's one of the board members. Hi, you can't see me, but uh, it's Tony Kennedy. I'm a board member. Tony, Tony, Tony Kennedy, okay. and then Jennifer Grandal is our attorney. Okay. So I think we've got everybody here. Okay. Oh, Dave is back on. Okay, and David King is also um, a board member, and he's out of town, but he's on line there. Okay. So make he, sure Dave knows that we approved his minutes. So okay. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll just wait for uh thank you <laughs> yeah no corrections needed dave yeah the only other person from my kind thank of you is the cell. i'm not sure if she's logged in yet or not not yet okay actually she texted me back so i hope she's not having an issue logging in she wouldn't be alone if that is okay <laughs> nope that wasn't right. See if Dave stays on, you won't have to give a report. I don't mind. I'm ready. No, you should be used to it. Too. I'm used to it. Yeah. Dad's yeah. <laughs> giving the report. A, you guys prefer 
a PowerPoint or just a verbal, whichever I can do either one. Well, um, probably if you can do verbal, okay. just, I think it, it might be. Might go faster at the back. Of that. that would probably be better. I know we do have issues sometimes with presentations and yeah. everybody on, but if if a verbal doesn't cramp your, you know, what no. you want to do here. Well, I can do either, or I actually then, printed it out so I can just read from it. So. Hey, yeah, well, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> um, this is Chris Coffin. Hi, nice to meet you. Are you All right. Here on behalf of a group, like, do you your group that you're referring to have a name? Yes, we're the, well, future Maple City Dog Park. Great, thanks. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, as I say, my name is Colleen Kilroy. I'm the president and treasurer of the Ma future Maple City Dog Park. Um, we're here, well, I say we, but it's, I say we to include the whole board, um, to basically ask for permission and talk to you guys about using a plot of your land, which is actually laid out here, um, to use for the dog park. Um, so on our board is myself, um, our vice president and secretary is Mary Prince. Um, our other vice president is Michael Briggs. And then we have two other board members, Lisa Meyer and Mary St. Pierre, who's logged in with us. Um, I mean, basically, you know, we think that a dog park in, in, I almost said Syracuse, in Ogdensburg would be pretty much beneficial, not just for the dogs and their owners, but for the city as well. Um, we think it'll bring in a lot of people, um, people who have friends and family that live here and want to visit if they have dogs that they want to bring. You know, having a dog park is a nice draw. Um, so that's something that the, the Chamber of Commerce can use for, you know, sort of marketing to kind of draw in some people. Um, if and when the border ever opens up to, you know, Canadian friends again, um, you know, Canadian folks with dogs that like to come over for shopping or dinner or stuff like that and have a recreation area to use for their dogs as well. Um, so far, you know, for the needs of the park, um, first and foremost, we need a location, we need a plot of land that's obviously approved by the city. Um, we will require some off-street parking just for safety so people getting their dogs in another car or you know on a street um, with traffic. We do plan to make it wheelchair accessible so that everybody can use it. Um, we will need some maintenance and you know we're not sure if this is something that you guys will take care of because you own the land or if it's going to fall on us. We had planned on it falling on us so if that's okay that or if that's the case that's fine. Um, but basically someone to mow in the summer, do the landscaping, some of the snow removal in the winter, um, and then someone to sanitize, you know, gate handles and stuff like that. We'll do that weekly. Um, we're going to provide some shade for both dogs and the humans. We plan on, you know, planting trees if there's not um, trees in the area. And of course there isn't on this one, but um, we're also going to use the trees as a fundraiser. Um, so if you have like a family member or a pet that you want to memorialize, by planting a tree, you can do something like that. Um, but we're also planning on things like a covered pavilion or a gazebo, and then kind of shade cloths around like the, the fencing, just to provide lots of shady areas for everybody. Um, we of course will have waste bag stations so that people can, you know, pick up their dog poo as it happens and make sure the park stays nice and clean. Um, we will provide seating. Um, I myself have a bad back. I'm not going to stand there for two hours while my dog's running around. So, you know, obviously <clears> people are going to need a place to sit. Um, and that's going to also provide another fundraising opportunity for us. You know, we can put a memorial chair or a memorial plaque on, you know, the chairs or benches. Um, we do also plan having separate areas for large dogs and small dogs, again, just for safety. Um, we don't want a large dog accidentally tumbling over a small dog and injuring them. Um, some dogs do have a pretty strong prey drive and a small dog running around can get that going. So just to prevent that kind of issue. Um, we're gonna have solar lights for night use. So, you know, people who work in the day, sleep at night, vice versa, they can still use the park at night if they need to. Um, we are also gonna have an airlock style entry, again, for safety so that people, and I'll have a picture here if you would like to look at that, um, basically so that it's, people can come and go without dogs getting loose. So people will come into the airlock, make sure the gate is closed behind them, and then ent actually enter the park. And then same thing for leaving so that nobody's getting loose. Um, we also plan on having a keypad entry for the door so that when people register their dogs, they'll get a, a code for the, for the entry 
and that'll limit the park to basically just the folks that are registered. So that way we only have um, healthy vaccinated dogs using the park, but it also limits people, you know, we do have some, some folks in town that are, you know, drug users and such, and they, you know, might think, oh, the park is a nice place to do some mischievous things in the middle of the night. So this keypad entry will hopefully kind of dissuade a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, of course, with COVID restrictions, you know, whatever restrictions come along as the park is opening and running, we'll make sure we follow all those mandates and keep everybody safe. Um, the proposed site is, should look familiar, <laughs> it's right out here. Um, there's a little parking lot right down there for the trail. Um, there's that little section there and then kind of a bigger section over here. And we were kind of thinking to divide it up like this. So the parking area is down here and then the small dog area would be first and then the large dog area would be up here. Um, if needed, we're kind of planning on putting like a fence or some sort of barrier between the two areas so that the do large dogs aren't visually being able to see the smaller dogs. So that again, that kind of limits the, the prey drive instinct getting, getting kind of kicked up. Just depends on how close the two areas are to each other. Um, so far, we have, we are not an official 5013C yet, but we are in the process of doing that. We've retained a lawyer. He's walking us through that process. Um, he has given us permission to start fundraising, but we weren't going to do that until we actually had some land secured so that we can say to people, this is official, this is actually happening, it's not just a, you know, pipe dream and we want your money for nothing. <laughs> um, we've, uh, we've named the, the organization Maple City Dog Park, we're trying to tie in, you know, the city. Um, it also, we were thinking that when people Google, you know, Maple City anything, every Maple City name is going to pop up. So Maple City Auto, Maple City Insurance, Maple City Trail, and eventually the Maple City Dog Park. So that will hopefully get us, you know, more, more recognition and our word out there a little bit more. Um, as I said, we've placed our initial board of directors. Um, we have a whole list of, if you want to see it, we have a whole list of Fundraising ideas this is our <laughs> list to go from. So we're ready and raring to go to raise funds as soon as we have the land um, in, in place. Um, we have both um, in-person events with dogs and then virtual fundraisers as well in case COVID, you know, kind of shuts things down again and we have to do everything online. Um, we also have, you know, opportunities for local businesses to get their name out there. We, you know, are going to offer them, you know, advertising basically in the park if they want to put up a plaque or a sign or something, you know, that way people using the park will be like, oh, there's, you know, town and country is advertising or, you know, things like that. Um, and then we've, you know, assembled a, an initial plan for the rules of the park. You know, we have a whole list of rules that are going to keep everybody safe. Um, a lot of people might balk at some of the rules, but um, I myself have done actually about 20 years of research on this. Um, pretty much ever since the Ames Kmart Great American strip mall went down and that lot's been empty, I've been like, ooh, let's have a dog park there. Um, so this is something we've done a lot of research on. We've compiled a list of rules that we think will really help make sure the park runs safely for everybody. Um, we are planning on having everybody register their dogs. Again, disease transmission purposes. We've got to make sure everybody's vaccinated, um, spayed and neutered, just to keep everybody not only healthy, but safe. If we have a female dog that's in heat and a male dog, even if they're, you know, neutered, that can kind of create some conflicts amongst the dogs. So we just want to try to limit as much of that as possible. Um, are you guys interested in the rules? I don't want to take up too much of your time. Can I look at your fundraising? Well, yes, absolutely. I'll just, I'll just, well, thank you. Yep. And then I do have the rules written down here. Um, I can pass that around too. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll be able to, you can email me um, or Anne Marie um, everything you've got there. We can distribute that. Yes, absolutely. To everybody. Yep. <clears throat> so um, I want to make sure I'm clear. So you're looking at uh, actually two spaces, uh, one off the, uh, the start of the trail for small dogs, and then coming uh, over here in front of this home that's on uh, Lisbon Street for a larger 
uh, larger dogs. Yep. And I don't know, maybe I missed this initially when we discussed it. Are you looking to uh, rent the land or are you looking for us to donate it to? Well, ideally to be donated. Um, if not, we are willing to, you know, um, come to some sort of like lease agreement if you wanted to lease us the land. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty flexible. We're open to whatever you're willing to do. Okay. Can you give me an idea of how high the fences would be and whether you could see through them? Yep. Um, we're planning right now on chain link fencing, but something. A I'm little sorry, bit. I missed a word. What kind of fencing? Sorry, chain link fencing. Yes. Um, something that looks nice, like you can get chain link that's been coated with like black. Um, I don't know the name of the material, but they kind of coat it. Yeah. yeah. So that it looks a little nicer than just you know the typical chain link. And we're planning on having them at least six feet tall, um, just because the bigger dogs, you know, sure. we don't want them trying to jump over. If any deer happen to wander into town, I don't know how often that happens, but we don't want any you know, wildlife getting in either. It does happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at least probably a six foot fence. I'm wondering, you mentioned um, <clears throat> advertisers and everything. Uh, they look nice in a hockey rink. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a chain link fence, I'm not so sure. I think that's a good idea. Well, we've also discussed the possibility of having, um, you know, some sort of wall structure um, that can be like the main advertising Sponsors. area as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rather than putting it, you know, on the fencing. Okay. Because mm -hmm. the other thing about putting it on the fencing, it would have to be outside so that the dogs aren't jumping on it and, right. you know, chewing on it, that kind of a thing. Okay. So we may end up just simply doing a wall for advertising. It's all makes sense what you're trying to do for fundraising. And, and I don't blame you. It's, it sounds like you've really considered a lot of um, ways to uh, raise money. Um, and, and I think it's overall, it's a good idea. Uh, I like I like the thought of the project. It's just all those little things that, that go with it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what it would look like, because um, we have to consider what it looks like to our tenants over here in Industrial Park mm -hmm. and those prospective tenants I come across the bridge and, and see what's over here on, on this side of our property. Yeah. Um, I, I guess we would, I would need to see a little bit more uh, details on what you want to do. Like, like renderings of, yes. um, you know, I'm sure you say you get an architect or an engineer. Um, not yet. Um, we were waiting to have land so that we knew, you know, how much space we had to work with. and. But, but coming in that, they'll have some renderings of mm -hmm. preliminary ideas yep. there that um, would give the board, uh, you know, kind of a rough idea of how it's going to look. And generally, that helps quite a bit because these either pointers or things, you get a rendering, sometimes it's a lot better than you imagine yep. from the discussion. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We can definitely put something like that together and email it to you. Again, I like the idea, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a lot more to it before we yeah finalize everything yeah and yeah the lady up there uh, i just have uh, some questions okay i agree she's a lawyer so she'll need to go through at some point go ahead tony um so i have two questions so my first one is have you raised any money for this like so far or is this kind of your first step in this this is our first step. We haven't um, started fundraising yet because, um, like I say, we wanted to have you know an actual physical place in um, in line first before we started asking folks for money. Okay, and um, this my second question is: This is kind of the only land that you've looked at so far, or are there other options like around in Augensburg or around the area that you that you think would work for this as well? We also considered, um, there's a, a small plot down near the community garden by the Fort Law presentation. Um, so we, that's kind of our next place if this doesn't work out. And then the lot that I mentioned in between Price Chopper and Buster's, that big empty lot, we were considering that as well. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. 
Okay, thank you. All these are tractor supply and um, yeah, kind of yeah. right in that general area. Yep, that big empty kind of concrete lot. We were just having trouble getting in touch with the who actually owns that property. Um, there's a BJ Sameo, I think, holds it. Yeah. Okay. We looked it up on I forget the website. Um, Chamber of Commerce directed me to the website. Um, it's Tophead Development LLC, but there's only an address for them online. I couldn't find a phone number. There's not even an email address. So we would have to send them like a physical letter, like a certified mail or something, if we, you know, went that route. Um, well, um, given, let's say you do get approval for the property, um, it's kind of difficult. It'll be depending on um, fundraising, but how, how from having the funds to, you know, actually opening opening it up what what do you see for a timeline we are hoping to have fences up by next fall before next winter so that people can at least start using the park and then you know things like the benches and the agility equipment and you know trees and all that stuff can kind of come along after um, but we were hoping to have the fencing up by next fall um, and if not fall then at least start to break ground the next spring can you run the facility, what I'm getting at is it piecemeal. I mean, I, I have a little reservation on that, is that you get to a certain point in either funding or things to where, you know, I, and I understand we, we, we definitely know about phasing things in and stuff, <laughs> but um, I would probably want to see a, a beginning phase that brings you to a operational standpoint where everybody feels comfortable with it and those extra things would be stuff that you phase two or three or whatever mm -hmm. with that. Have, have you thought of it in that way? Or, I mean, when you say just put the fences up, that automatically all I think of is just a six foot chain link fence, maybe with the numeric gate and that's it. So I, nothing against what you're saying, but I'm just no, saying, I, understand. Um, I would say I would have to see more there than just chain link fence with, with that. I'm just, just trying to be honest with you yep. with that. Um, yeah, I mean, we've we've discussed, you know, the whole process of where we need to go first, second, you know, and then move on from there. Um, so, yeah, it's mainly we have to, once we have the land, it's get a hold of a fencing contractor, find out how much the fencing is going to be, fundraise for that if we can't get it donated. Um, you know, we were hoping to just kind of have the fencing up and have the park start to be used, but if you would prefer it to be more aesthetically pleasing, which I understand, um, then we can include that into... Not so much aesthetic as um, operational, that, like when you say solar lights and, and all of those things, some of those you may not be able to do right off. Does that um, preclude you from saying it's operational? I'm just saying... Yeah, we would like to have, you know, things like the... There the should be, I, I would just say there should be, a, and I'm not telling you what to do, but a minimum standard of uh, what you want to what you want to open with. Yeah. That, you know, you're not um, short-sighted and then you have problems right. with people using it. Right. No, we're hoping to have it as, you know, as <clears throat> functional as possible when we when we finally open it and actually allow people to start using it. Okay. I have a couple questions. Yeah, go ahead. So, first of all, I hope I'm not out of line asking. I'm yeah. really curious. I'm wondering, you know, especially, I mean, <clears throat> let's just say hypothetically we, we entered into a lease agreement. <clears throat> Um, for your source of revenue, will you be asking the people who register their dogs to pay like a fee, like a yearly yes. membership fee? Yes. As far um, as the revenue goes. Yep. Every time someone registers or you know yearly renews, we're going to have them have a, a, a donation um, registration fee. It's going to be something very reasonable, you know, twenty, thirty dollars for the year, so that everybody can afford it. Okay. And then that way we have that little bit that we know is steadily coming in, in addition to the the yearly fundraisers. Okay. Um, and I guess my big, big, big question is I understand that, you know, this concept, you know, is going to um, attract just responsible dog owners. Mm -hmm. um, but where, you know, where is the responsibility and accountability going to lie? So dogs get aggressive, someone gets bitten, someone's repeatedly not picking up their dog waste, you know, any, you know, or, um, you know, 
it's it's vandalized. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm not I'm not typically a naysayer, but I'm just wondering. I mean, I think that's that's a big consideration for me. Um, I know that you you your board is not going to be there policing it, but but where who's going to hold the responsibility and accountability for those sorts of things? Um, well, we plan on getting liability insurance for anything you know that happens, but we, it is basically going to be a self policing kind of park. Um, that's another reason why we're going to have people register and pay a donation because we feel if people are you know paying to use this park, then they're going to feel more inclined to take care of it. Um, the board members are going to be checking out. I mean, we have, several of us have dogs, so they're going to be using the park regularly. And those of us who don't, we're going to be checking on the park, you know, a couple times a week, at, weekly at the absolute minimum. Um, and any issues that arise, we will, you know, address them as they happen. Um, but part of also registering their dogs is we're going to kind of screen the dogs as well, because not every dog is appropriate for a dog park. So we're going to have a very, you know, um, frank discussion, you know, how is your dog with other people, with children, with dogs, you know, all these kinds of things, mm -hmm. just to try to limit, you know, as much of those issues as possible. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did anyone else want to look at the fundraising or the rules? I think the fundraising, or no, the rules came down. So okay. And we'll get copies of the fundraising. Yeah, we'll okay. okay. Yeah, I will email both of those to me. <laughs> Great. Whichever yeah. is easier. <laughs> Anything else, Jen? No. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't think you. Thank you. Cool. I think yes. I think this is this conversation is very preliminary stages. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and I can't speak for the longevity of the board because I'm just a board member that has a term. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, that the sale of the land or the donation of the land wouldn't be something that we would do because they're, they're pretty focal points to our property. Um, and I, I guess the thought of a lease agreement, I, I always go to the end. So what happens in 10 years, 15 years down the road if this park doesn't end up making it? How does that? decommission of the park look uh, who's responsible for yeah, removal like a, solar, a solar farm type of thing yeah, yeah. 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 i always think right to that yeah. you know yeah. if um <laughs> if we build some kind of a gazebo or, a or if you build some kind of a gazebo or a dugout who's responsible for the maintenance who's responsible for the electricity to it oh, what happens yeah, yeah. so yeah. i go yeah. right to that but i know that that's way we're way too early in the stage to be thinking about that but that's where i go um and liability was a big one that yeah. i had to come yeah. right yeah, like I say, we were planning on getting liability insurance so that, you know, that would fall on us and you guys wouldn't be liable if anything happened. Um, as far as, you know, termination of the park, we have only gotten as far in discussing that is um, as far as finances. You know, when people donate money to the park, if the park fails, where does that money go? Um, and we've decided we're going to donate it to an animal organization right here in town, most likely the SPCA. Um, but, uh, you know, the destruction of the park, I guess, that's not something that we had actually discussed yet, but I can run that by them. And, and, and just so they know, a lot of solar, um, when you do a solar thing, you ask over time, um, you have a fund put away that takes care of that issue. It's, you know, as long as it keeps running and everything, fine, but there's money put away that, you know, we, we'd hold an escrow or whatever toward that, and if things go fine, um, and I know there's a legal way to do all of that, but I'm just saying from general rule, that could be some something that we look at. Okay. Anyone else? Tony, you all set? Oh, Dave? <laughs> Dave? Dave left? No? <laughs> anything else? Popping in and out. Any, anything else, Colleen? Um, no, nope, that was pretty much all we had. Um, I'm not sure where to go from here. I assume you guys have to discuss some things. Yeah, if you would send your presentation, there might be more questions. And yeah. Okay, yep. We'd probably look to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in another month or two, um, maybe for a facilities committee mm -hmm. that you just mm -hmm. come again and um, maybe we get into a little more detail. Okay. And based on the questions that you answer, we get to go farther along and then, um, you know, Kind of bring everything into focus. Okay, yep. Okay. Yep, yep that sounds good. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, All right. thank you guys very much. Yep, thank you for letting me come, for hearing me out. <laughs> you too. So I will. Anne Marie, would it be easier for me to email it to you or to Steve? Do it to Anne Marie. Anne Marie? Okay. I think, she, I think you got some emails back and forth. We've just talked on the phone. Right, right. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, I will email those pretty much as soon as I get home so you guys will have that. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Good Have job. a good night, guys.
State Committee reports, Facilities Committee. Yes, so I will report for um, Dave. So the Facility Committee, um, Facilities Committee met on Monday, January 10th at 3.30. Um, the meeting was held in its entirety in executive session as specifics um, in contracts were discussed. Um, I'd also just to make a note that um, this meeting was also prior to um, the announcement by SkyWest that they would, you know, they were um, filed a 90 day mm -hmm. notice right to the federal Bureau of State. So um, basically overall, uh, we reviewed the recommended next steps on the action on action items um, from the airport action plan, which was prepared by the Stephen Baldwin Associates. Uh, we also discussed an addendum to the contract with OML State, Ogdensburg Marketing Logistics, Logistics Company. Thank you. Any questions at this point? Or Jim? Um, just one thing that, that will be brought up in um, the OMLC contract, the results of the facilities committee discussion will be on, is on today's agenda okay. and we will be looking for approval of that. Okay. So that's the result of that. Right. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Incoming expense report, Chris. The uh, finance committee did not meet at the end of December during the holiday season. And uh, so it has not reviewed the December statements. We will at our January meeting, review both uh, November and December and uh, return to uh, typical function at that point. <laughs> so we have no report. Typical function. <laughs> typical function. <laughs> um, you know, just to make it clear that uh, the end of December is not the end of our fiscal year. I know a lot of uh, other organizations and companies, they go by the calendar year. We do not. We go by the, uh, the state's year, so um, our fiscal year does not end until March 31st. So December is just another month. Yep. Okay. Patty, anything you want to add? No, I think we're, I think Good. we're fine. Okay. Bridge traffic report. I believe that's in here. Mr. Morris? Yes. Um, well, December was our most hopeful month until it wasn't, um, <laughs> as, you know, and I am not going to go into all of the issues with the border crossing again, because, um, but everybody kind of knows all the issues involved in that. But um, we, we did see, you see that percentage change went to 62, which was quite a change from the low 80s or the high 70s that we were, we've been seeing for the last couple months. So. Um, I would say at the beginning of December, we were very hopeful that um, we would just gradually get our way out. But just judging from what I see every day, um, I think we're going to be back to uh, back to the the 80% mark or or thereabouts. But you can see on there that um, we had an increase over 2019 on truck traffic. That's all other mm -hmm. crossings, and then also we uh, we had an increase. Well, that's over 2019, which is a non-COVID year, so that that was encouraging. Mm -hmm. But as you all know, there's issues with Canada and the U.S. about requiring vaccination for truck drivers, and that will definitely have an impact. Um, you'd think that both nations could get together on that and resolve that, but it's going to have a huge impact logistically and cross-border traffic. Um, and with the shortage of truck drivers, those truck drivers that aren't vaccinated, can find a job in no time, either one side or the other. Um, so um, that, I don't, I don't believe that's gonna be any kind of incentive for um, truckers to get vaccinated, but anyway. Um, so you can see um, those numbers there. Um, don't get too excited about the 245% the, uh, increase over 2020, but <laughs> it isn't. It is the revenue side is forty thousand over twenty twenty, so that's that's uh, definitely the bottom line. You see on the bottom there, um, we handle truck permits for our bridge. Um, some trucks that are slightly overweight or have um, um, heavy loads or oversized loads, they're required to get permits for us, so that um, you, you you don't need a permit if you're 
if you follow all the uh, bridge reg regulations and New York State regulations. But if you've got a different configuration on a truck, um, that you know the configuration may be right, but your weight load may be a little heavier. Um, so long as that all matches up, we we provide permits. So with truck permits, I'm just showing the the revenue that we generated um, for the 20. The this is the annual year. It's not the fiscal year, but truck permits were 21,000, and that's multi-axle loads. The heavy loads are the ones that have to be um, blessed by an engineer. And uh, you can see that we had eight commuter car shipments to, for OC Transpo. That's been a kind of a little bonus for us. We had four the other day that um, came in Monday, Tuesday night. Tuesday, but they couldn't. Cross. Tuesday, but we have a regulation. No, wait, they came in Monday night. You're right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have a lot of oversized loads or heavy loads during the winter because that's just not the way a lot of people operate. But with these uh, OC transpo cars, um, bridge regulations mean that the ambient temperature has to be between zero and 85 degrees. And it was yesterday. Tuesday. Tuesday. It didn't get up until two above until about 3.30. And that was too late, so they had to stay here. But we had to hold them here just to protect the bridge. When things are too cold and brittle, you get contraction. Something could happen out there. And then when it's too hot, you have expansion. And to, to subject the bridge to that kind of load, you're asking for issues. I would say in my 20 years, I've never had to hold anybody back because of temperature. But um, and it's unfortunate, but they they understood. But we we got four more for uh, this month. And there'll be more coming. And then on the oversized load, those are really just uh, wide loads. And basically, we just shut the bridge down for five or ten minutes and get them across. And um, but it 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 does go to our revenue there. So I just want to make you aware uh, of that. We've been tracking that for the last two years. Just um, and Patty's going to separate this out so that it just doesn't get rolled into bridge tolls, so that we yeah. we kind of know what. Yeah. Yeah. Right what we're, we're doing there. And I think too, because um, sometimes we're, uh, it's tougher to get multi or heavy loads and wide loads across the, the more busier bridges. Um, so they, they do um, come to us because there's less complications in that. So I just wanted to put that in there for now. Good. Any questions on that? Tony, anything on the bridge traffic report? She's off, Dave's off. Oh, she is, oh, she's okay. okay. All right, let's move on to the airport activity and occupancy report, Steph. Okay, for the occupancy report, it has not changed since last month. We have one hangar, two hangar that is unoccupied. I do expect closer to spring it will be leased. Um, but other than that, we're pretty much at capacity. The passenger traffic report, happy to report, we got our 10,000 employments for the year. Uh, December was our third um, biggest month for employments for the year. Now, just so everyone's clear, what does that 10,000 mean? The 10,000 employments per year ensures us $1 million in AIP funding mm -hmm. annually. And what does AIP stand for? Airport Improvement Program. It's for the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, um, <laughs> that is their... It's an acronym, it's an acronym. It's their, um, their grant program and the 10,000 employments ensures us a $1 million grant. Which is, which is very important. It's extremely important. A 10,000 figure is very important. Yes, it is. And if, you know, you look down through um, on, on the employments and the load factors, uh, there's some very good months there. And yes. uh, while I, I was going to hold some of my discussion on this, obviously, um, some of those load factors shows that uh, uh, the traffic in and out of our airport on uh, the SkyWest uh, 50 passenger jets, I think, uh, showed that uh, we have people who want to fly out of our airport. Yes. 
and and correct me if I'm wrong, but in your opinion, do you believe that uh, Sky West was happy with those numbers? Yes, they were happy with the numbers. Thank you. Any other questions, of Stephanie? Uh, just just uh, looking for an explanation on the chart in the lower left-hand corner, uh, within boxes at the bottom, I see 2020 totals and 2019 totals. What are those the totals of? Those are inflamed passengers. Uh, I'm sorry. Those are the inflamed passengers for um, SkyWest alone. Oh, okay. And then if you look to the right, when Allegiant was still still here, those are their numbers. And those added together are the 2020 and 2019 total employments. Yep, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? No? Board activity reports, Steve? Okay, um, as you can see, our December salt log on, on there will be very busy with uh, sending out um, salt. We're back to uh, the days when I first started. We, we had days where we were moving 3,500 3, tons a day and 12,000 a week. Right now, we're kind of running around eight to 8,500 tons which um, for two loaders um, and the work we do, that's um, pretty solid all day long. Not to mention you throw in uh, loading grain, um, the utilization on those machines has been very good. And uh, um, we, uh, we're we looking right now, you can see that uh, basically we've run about 29,000 tons in the month of December. And already I think we're at 15 or 16,000 for January. Um, we've got plenty of salt to, to move, so um, we'd like to have uh, a lot of that gone and that property available for our upcoming uh, wind projects. So either way, we've, we've worked out a plan that we can work around that if there is leftover salt. Um, and then um, grain is, um, we haven't had a lot of inbound, but what, what was there now, we're starting to free up some space that, um, Pretty much, we were uh, we were close to being 90% full with flat storage capacity. So we're, we are moving grain, and then the uh, last part of that, you can see the um, the yearly numbers, um, the annual numbers for grain, and then the annual numbers for salt. So um, that's just kind of the end of the year summary there. Um, any questions on any of that? No. Um, we are working on, we, Anne-Marie and David King um, worked on a letter to the state. Um, I am I really just looking for an address for an individual that we're going to send that letter to. Um, and I've asked for help from the uh, governor's office with that. You know, I heard a report on NPR uh, <laughs> regarding the, that process. I think thing and a new committee was selected um reach out to assemblyman uh, billy jones okay and um see um because he was uh the uh assembly member that uh, pushed the um program uh, reduction program and the adirondacks and i think this ties in you might want to ask if uh, he feels that we may, uh, we should come into the conversation okay. with that committee. Not to give you another assignment, but. I know, I know Billy a little bit. So yeah. I hope we can get in touch with him. Good, because he, um, <clears throat> he was a prime mover of that, that whole project in the Adirondacks to reduce the amount of uh, salt used on the roads. Okay, building occupancy report. Patty, are you still handling that for now? Or? Yes, I am. This is the last time I have to ask you. Or... <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe soon. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 <laughs> close. 
Okay. Maybe one more time. Okay. Um, we still have the same numbers. We have one space in building four that's available. We just uh, renewed a lease with NAC Logistics for the trucks that park out here mm -hmm. on a temporary basis. I believe we have a resolution for those. And under other such matters today. Right. Yep. Uh, so we're, st we're still full. Full. So we have less than 2,000 feet available? Less than 2,000 square feet. Thank you. Any questions? None? Any unfinished business, Mr. Lawrence? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay, move into business items. Um, under A1, committee assignments. Uh, to be honest with you, committees have worked out very well. I'm very pleased with all of them, and I'd like to keep them the same. Make it easier on you, Ann Rogers. Okay. Uh, agenda item A2, approval of state mandated officer appointments. Mr. Lawrence? Each year, the authority is required to complete reporting to New York State. As part of that process, it is required by the state that the authority designated officer appointments to represent the OBPA. Um, it is recommended by staff that the following be appointed to the positions as outlined below. Contracting officer and the appointed officer would be executive director. Liaison and Office of Prevention of Domestic Violence, the executive director. Internal Control Officer, Board Action of March 4th, 2019. Minority Women and Business Enterprise Officer would be the CFO. Ethics Officer, the executive director. Data Coordinator, the CFO. Records Access Officer, Senior Administrative Assistant, Service Disability Veteran Owned Business Officer, CFO, Sustainability Coordinator, the CFO. New York State requires that these appointments be renewed each year at the annual meeting of the Board of Directors of the Augensburg Bridge and Port Authority. Thank you. Resolution before you, is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Not Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Burns? Yes. Yes. Mr. Renoli? Yes. Mr. Calder? Yes. Okay. Move on to agenda item A3 amendment of an existing promissory note with Tompkins Trust Company. However, this is the um, line of credit uh, promissory note with Tompkins Trust that allowed us to do the funding of. Um, of payments on the Tiger Grant Bridge project. Um, time ran out, we, we did it in um, December and January of 2021. And we thought the project would be done with payments. And the project is done, but the payments applications still require um, funding. Um, it's down to less than probably three, 400,000 maybe mm -hmm. that has to be done, Later. but it's beyond the uh, shelf life of the original agreement. Um, so, Jennifer, do I need to read this? I think that everybody has it, right? And we can make the, the resolution available to anybody else who would like to see it, but unless the board feels that it should be read into the record, I think we can just add it to the formal yeah. record. <laughs> What's your I, pleasure? I would move the motion to the <laughs> resolution. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the resolution? If not, Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Thank you. Agenda item A4 appointment of Director of Economic Development. Ms. Now, would you like to start off on that little discussion on that? Or? Um, well, we, you know, we just had a really fabulous interview with our candidate. Um, very, very enthusiastic, energetic, smart, 
ready to take on the position. So we're all really excited about that. Um, with all the interviews on the 15th of December, we did come up with this candidate's name. Due to the fact that he would have to cross the border, hopefully to be doing business in Canada, we actually did run a background check on the young man to ensure that he didn't get to the border and was turned around. <laughs> Oops. Um, so after all of that, uh, we have the resolution here after thorough review and evaluation of those applications selected for further consideration. Interviews were conducted with candidates for the Director of Economic Development position. Based on the results of those interviews, it is recommended that Anthony Ademzik be appointed to the position of Director of Economic Development at the starting salary of $85,000 prorated effective on or about the 14th of February with a one-year probationary period and management confidential benefits. Okay. And this gentleman comes from Clarkson University. He's a local man, went to college at Clarkson and had through internships and other little projects through the uh, the university, he was able to stay right on. And has experience with uh, international trade. 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 So, yeah, I'm not sure exact, mm -hmm. but in uh, patents and development. Yes. Of, uh, a lot of it was yeah. uh, in intellectual property. Yeah. Property. Mm -hmm. So exciting. Well, I'm anxious to move forward. I think that uh, this sounds like an excellent choice, and uh, it's an important position that we need to fill. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so we will give him lots of work to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Resolutions before the board. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. During discussion. Nadia and Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Anelli? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Yes. Welcome to Andy. Yay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Agenda item D1, approval of ACIP. Steph, you gonna handle that or Steve, somebody? Stephanie can do it. She's okay. more immersed in it. As you can see with the magnifying glass. I was going to say, just barely. <laughs> uh, this is our um, airport capital improvement program or our plan. And it is a plan. It is required by the FAA in order to receive and utilize our grant money. We need to put a plan together stating what we're going to use the money for, why we're going to use it, and uh, why it's a benefit to us. So this is the plan through 2020, yeah, through 2025 of the projects we feel are most important for the uh, improvement of the airport. And this, of course, is... Uh, based upon the funding available. As I said, this is not written, this is not a commitment to spend this money, this is a plan. And um, a, a lot of it here, we, we've got the 2022 um, is working on design for the snow removal equipment building, which is AIP fund, you know, funded. We have an airport drainage improvement project that has already been designed that would start construction on. Um, the design for the service road for the snow removal equipment building. Um, security improvements, public sewer uh, connection if, and one that becomes available, design and construct terminal and expansion when and if that becomes necessary and uh, the design construct maintenance facility um, goes along with the snow removal equipment building. Um, 2023, the terminal apron expansion design, 2024, construct the snow removal equipment building and the service road and so on. And then 2025, um, we are eligible again for uh, more snow removal equipment. If you see the NPR 
and I don't remember the, what that acronym stands for, but it rates the importance in the eyes of the FAA of each of these projects. So the higher the number, the more likely that the projects will be approved. And this, has, this will need to be, once approved by the board, it has to be submitted to the FAA. And um, there's the backup information for the, the current projects. So if you have any questions. Is the FAA out of 100? Yes. I'm sorry. Again, this is just a, a plan. Uh, when we receive the uh, the grant we've applied for, that would change this plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we have to have a plan in place with the regulation, and there it is. Mm -hmm. I believe we've talked about this in facilities, Jen. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Chris? This, this seems like a reasonable plan, and I, I'd be delighted to approve it and move on. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Okay. It's made and seconded. Any discussion? Not here. Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Yes. Okay. Agenda item e, E1, Port of Augensburg. Approval of OMLC Addendum to the Marketing and Logistics Support Agreement. Mr. Lawrence? Um, the OBP and Augsburg Marketing and Logistic Company has uh, been at an agreement since uh, 2014, a 10-year agreement. Um, as part of negotiations um, on rate re or management fees reduction and then talking about the length of the contract, we've come to an agreement where OMLC will reduce their management fee by half their uh, monthly fee effective January 1st, 2022. In return, we have agreed to extend the agreement for a 10 year period effective on October 1st, 2024 and expiring September 30th, 2034. Um, that, those are the main points of the uh, addendum to the current agreement. Any questions? Steve, I uh, am not on the facilities committee, so I'm not totally familiar with the compensation arrangements in this case. But as I read the uh, amendment, I was guessing that OMLC receives some payment based on the volume shipped through the port in addition to this a remuneration covering the salary. You're, you're correct. New, so that on perhaps, new business. perhaps they're not actually cutting their revenue or the amount we will pay them, but just decreasing the guarantee, if you will. Is that, an, am I understanding what's going on? Yeah, that, that the part of sharing in new business remains the same, right. but the um, what's happened is, um, the individual that they have here is um, of value at, at other parts of their U.S. Mm -hmm. subsidiary. So some of his time now is, um, and with remote and things like that, of course, he he still uses this as the base. Yes. But he will be um, involved in some of their. They have a Chicago and a Houston operation. Um, he's he's been doing that, especially during the winter months, when um, a lot of that. Um, that he is either phone or emails or sure. computer work. Whereas once you start getting into April through November, we need his hands-on um, and OMLC's uh, personnel to assist us with our projects. So that's kind of the agreement um, we've come to understand, but that, that relates to that monthly fee. Sure. And that's why um, as a fairness thing, we get the benefit of a reduction in our costs and they get the ability to um, use his talents in other places. Um, and I'm good with that. And you, you're satisfied that we will still have enough of his time to address our Definitely. Interests. Definitely. There is no way I would ever hurt the poor. Yeah. <laughs> Since that's my favorite. So sure. that was one of the chairman's first questions. Of, <laughs> of uh, the individual down there and 
he got the message. Well, I think that that's an outstanding uh, arrangement to be able to save some money, reflecting a real rea reallocation of seasonal time. Um, and Very good. And, and it, it allows us to do other things <clears throat> that I think we've all talked about before, mm -hmm. and maybe Steve can touch on that. Um, part of that is um, while I'm still here and while he's here is the individual that's supposed to take my place as director of operations that I've talked to you all about is to bring him in um, the early part of the second quarter of this year and gain what knowledge, my knowledge has increased immensely just yeah. being around there, um, more of a worldly view and a, a Great Lakes view of what a port means to things and how to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, but between that and then um, having a busy project year, what well, would be ideal to have somebody more for the um, supervision and grunt work of just being there and being a representative at eight at night um, and being able to make decisions on our behalf mm -hmm. and then also get the knowledge and being around um, uh, port operations because up here, quite frankly, in my position, um, my resume would, nobody up here would really want my resume because there's only one complex structure, a bridge yeah. and a port, and, and maybe the airport part, I might have a little bit of a shot, but, um, but just to find somebody that's got port experience here, um, is it, unless you took them from a region in New York State or there, whereas if you're in Newark or New York, there's all kinds of people that have that experience. So um, we kind of got to grow them yep. on our own, but we want to grow them with a more world view or an industry view and to have OMLC there um, kind of correcting and guiding somebody like that um, will will help us once, you know, when I leave here and mm -hmm. possibly maybe when OMLC leaves that somebody has that confidence to be able to run the, the port the way that it should be run. Right. We're and still, we're still uh, learning. Question about the 10 year agreement. It seems like a long time in the business world mm -hmm. and some companies go out of business and other companies just go to hell. <laughs> and uh, what sort of options do we have to cancel if um, OMS LC stopped performing? We there is an out um, <clears throat> with those, and um, the one thing to understand is really we're paying for their knowledge yep. and uh, an individual to be here. Other than that, we're the ones that have the buildings, the equipment, and um, we've got everything in the game, and they're showing us how to use it mm -hmm. properly. So. From their standpoint, um, you know, let's just say they weren't happy with us. There's not a lot on our part that we would have to um, pay back or anything for an investment. There may be some special things. Um, right now, I can't think of any, but over time, there may be. But they really aren't. We haven't given them the freedom to just come in and take over the port. Mm -hmm. We're the way it was set up is we're still there. We're responsible to the unions there and then the people and taking care of the buildings. Mm -hmm. So in effect, um, and then they allow us from the monies that we share to put that money into the infrastructure down there. So um, in that regard, they don't have a lot in there and there isn't a, an ability to get out of that um, right. um, with the parties involved. Right. So if we had to, for some reason that we judged sound to cancel the arrangement, basically you have to give them decent notice. And there might be some claim for expenses on their part, but uh, we're not talking a lot of money. Um, your questions came up when we first yeah. had the uh, the 10 year. Yeah. And at the time everyone was going to, but in the world of uh, port operations, mm -hmm they they thought long term that maybe by year five or six or if, if you kept it at three years 
you everyone might hold back and the thing never blossoms well, well this is a real statement of intention yes yes, yes. You know, and everybody's working for a long term yep. yep happy arrangement yeah and then they see and and you know when i talked to you about this with the equipment that we're we're working on with to the chrissy grant um of course there's going to be a part of our investment to complete the whole grant which is a lot of money but mm -hmm. to have that stuff here we can we were able to obtain um, revenue from that rather than rent somebody else's equipment, yeah. specialty equipment. So, yep. so a lot of that falls in line with this, that it'll be our equipment, we'll know how to use it. And we also know this is the equipment we need, not something short um, in capacity and everything like that. So, you know, we'll try to obtain the, the uh, kind of the rating that we're, we're a great operation or a big operation for our port. I'm comfortable. Okay. Good. Resolution is before you. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. Motion has been made and seconded. <laughs> Any further discussion? Not Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you. Where am I? Am I down to F1? Other such matters? Yes. We have my page here. Okay, we have agenda item F1 approval of supplement number five with NAC logistics. Did you do that, Patty? I don't have any. Sure. Thank you. Staff has prepared a lease supplement with NAC Logistics for a parking area at the Bridge Administration Building at the rate of $400 per month for the period November 1st, 2021 through October 31st, 2022. All other terms and conditions of the original lease shall remain in full force and effect. We have actually increased the rent on this space for the trucks that, that park here while they wait to go over. Okay. Any questions? Not, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion's I'll second. been made and seconded. I'll second, yeah. Any further discussion? Not Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Okay. That was other six matters. Anything else, Mr. Lawrence? Uh, no, probably meeting dates, and then um, we'll go into, we'll have to close out and go into the two other annual yes. board meetings. Tony wanted me to let you know that Thursdays are probably the worst night for her. Oh, so Thursdays are bad for her? Yes. Yeah. So Wednesdays are better. There we go. Let's put that out there. Wednesday, so February 9th. Four o'clock, is that? I generally have uh, 6.30 meetings on, on Wednesday? Wednesday nights. Okay. Um, second Wednesday of the month. Okay. So do we want to try to stay with the temp and see if we can have Tony as much as possible? Unless someone has a different time, you want to move to, excuse me, the third, will that be the third Thursday? The 17th, you mean? No, you don't want Thursday. You want a 16th. Right, because I don't think Thursday, any Thursday is going to work. It's not going to help her out. Yeah. So Wednesday the 19th? Chris, is that, is that, that better That would work Wednesday for me easily. Yep. Okay. It's the 16th. Wednesday, the 16th of February. You know, if I could get into, into February. <laughs> 19th of Saturday. Hey, what are you? Say, you're better there. Okay, <laughs> out of January. What's the I'm end? only available on the first and second Wednesdays of the month. Because there's both that have prior meetings. So, so what about Wednesday the second? Yeah, that's a tough one for Patty. That would be hard to get everything together, wouldn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. Well, we would have had the finance committee the day before. <laughs> so oh, the geez. financial information will be <laughs> right there. Um, <laughs> trying to stick with the time and the 
hope yeah, for the best. And just hope for the best. We'll take the tenth for you, Chris. Sure, that works. And Dave, we don't know. Let's let's stay with the tenth. We'll just see if we can get uh, Tony more time out of Tony. Hopefully, okay. All right. Any uh, concluding comments from citizens? Nope. Uh, board members or staff? The press is on, I believe. The or press is on? Yes, and actually, um, Jeff Cole would like to phone him after because he said a lot of it was muffled with the mask. Okay, yeah, I imagine it was. Well, just as well. Um, but there are still on if any other questions? Well, well, let me just say that uh, it's it's early in the process, um, but the uh, surprise we received uh, yesterday from uh, Sky West, uh, my initial reaction uh, was to be very upset uh, at uh, Sky West and the whole process. However, after thinking about uh, you know what's going on. Uh, across the, uh, not just the country, I guess, across the uh, the world uh, with uh, air traffic. Um, you know, I think it's a difficult situation for uh, for the company SkyWest and uh, United and all the other airlines. Um, so I guess I can understand where they're coming from. Uh, not that uh, I, I like what's happening, but uh, everyone needs to understand that we will have service from them until um, federal DOT sends out uh, uh, bidding notices and see if uh, other airlines are interested um, in servicing the uh, Augsburg Airport. All we can do is uh, hope for the best. It's early in the process. Um, I'm a firm believer in the uh, larger the plane, the better the hub, the uh, better the schedule, the better it is for our customers and the passengers that fly out of our airport. So uh, let's let's hope for that. Um, and I must give uh, Senator Schumer and his staff uh, credit for responding as uh, fast as they did. Uh, the Senator um, sent a letter to uh, the Secretary of the uh, Department of Transportation, Honorable Pete Buttigieg, um, regarding the situation with uh, SkyWest and EAS here at uh, Augensburg and the other North Country community, uh, that they need to um, move immediately to work on finding a new carrier for uh, Augsburg, and I think everyone knows it's Plattsburgh International Airports, and to issue a hold-in order to prevent any service disruptions, which I think um, will certainly uh, help the traveling public in our area. And I'd like, again, to thank the Senator for being so quick to react. She's certainly been um, very supportive of the uh, Augensburg Airport and the uh, Bridge and Port Authority. So we can thank him for that. Uh, <clears throat> and in regards to uh, our uh, grant that we have submitted to New York State for the uh, revitalization of upstate airports, uh, 20 million grant that we submitted thanks to the uh, help we received from uh, Leanne. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's even more important now than before. And uh, even though SkyWest have announced that uh, they're not going to, um, they're going to terminate service 90 days or a little bit longer, it's important for us and the region, I believe, to uh, push even harder on receiving that grant because what that does is two things. It increases the opportunity for us to increase our revenue at the airport to offset our cost. Uh, Steve and the uh, facilities committee, I think, has come up with an excellent uh, project proposal, the 20 million to do that. 
and the fact that I think in the long term it will make it easier to attract uh, airlines uh, that will provide better service here for, for our communities. So we're by no means giving up on, on any of that. In fact, we're going to push harder with um, anybody, any of us know um, that we need that. We definitely need that. And, uh, you know, if it means we uh, take a road trip, then uh, my little bag is packed and I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so um, no, we don't, at the Bridge Port Authority, we no longer throw our hands up in the air and give up. That doesn't happen. We just dig deeper and do whatever we can. We know what our mission is and we will get it done, period. I think over the last two years, uh, Albany realizes that what we faced with uh, the border being closed and, and COVID and everything, uh, we've shown that uh, we made a commitment to do the right thing at the authority. And this staff certainly has, uh, Steve and Patty and all the others, staff, all, all of the, the staff here at the Bridgeport Port has done a tremendous job considering what COVID had done to us, has done to us. Uh, since it, uh, it started. And uh, there's no reason why we can't come out of this uh, stronger and uh, better for the for the region. Um, it seems like we have very good, very few good news. Um, the other issue, of course, is the uh, dredging of the harbor and the um, dock wall expansion that uh, we're doing everything we can to have that project proceed. And uh, thanks to our uh, federal representatives and the um, in Congress that will move forward uh, with that, trying to get that completed. That is also very important to us and we'll keep fighting for that. Okay. Anyone else? No? Okay. In light of that, <clears throat> we have the date set. Uh, no other issues. Is there a motion to adjourn the Bridge and Port Authority annual meeting and go into the others? I'll to move. Most motions have been made. Second? Second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned.